Hi, my name is Crystal Fletcher, and today, June 21st, is National Indigenous Peoples Day in celebration of the First Nations, Métis, and Inuit's unique culture and diversity in recognizing all of their accomplishments. I have a very special guest today, Sheila O'Neill. Sheila O'Neill is an author, a drum carrier, founding member and past president of Newfoundland Aboriginal Women's Network. She's also part of a grassroots movement of empowerment of Indigenous women within Newfoundland and Labrador. She is a member of the Halipu Mi'kmaq First Nation. Welcome, Sheila O'Neill. Well, thank you, Crystal. I'm very happy to be here. And happy National Indigenous Peoples Day. Thank you so much and happy National Indigenous Peoples Day to you as well. Thank you. Thank you. So I am so excited and I have been so looking forward to talking to you because you are a drum carrier and the, I just I'm just very fascinated and interesting and interested in what you're going to discuss today. So first of all, if we could go right back, um, what is the importance of the drum to the Indigenous culture? Well, I'll start by saying that the teachings I have uh, were passed on to me by respected elders, mm -hmm. and they may not be the same teachings that everyone has. So what I'm sharing today are the teachings that I carry. Okay, okay so the teachings I have on the drum is that the drum is our connection to creator. It's the heartbeat of the people, mm -hmm. and that by hearing the drum, creator can tell if we, uh, how we are doing, I guess, basically. Yeah, okay, okay. And um, can you explain, Sheila, the role of the drum carrier? Uh, the drum carrier, well, it's something you have to earn and it's a calling. Um, I first heard the call of the drum and, and went on my journey to becoming a drum carrier. But the responsibility with that is that I have to carry the songs or I'm responsible or have the honor, I guess, of carrying the songs and sharing them with others. Yeah. Uh, others who come to drum circle, uh, to lead drum circle and to share the teachings that go with the songs and go with the drum. Okay. And um, is this, is it a hereditary role or can any woman who's interested in the drum be called? No, it's anyone who's interested can be called. And I had a very significant moment when I was when I was called. Um, I was working at a community college and there were some international students there from Jamaica and uh, doing an exchange. And, and their last uh, cup, last night there, we had a big multicultural function in the cafeteria. And so they shared some of their culture and some of the students shared their culture and one of them was a drum carrier uh, with uh, a Mi'kmaq drum carrier. He was a student named Randy. And uh, so I was there, you know, you're there in an official capacity, you know, you've got your work, your work hat on and you're making sure everyone's okay and that the food is out and that, 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 that. And so that, that was my mindset until Randy stood up and he gave the first beat of the drum and my whole mind shifted. Mm. And I felt myself being carried, like just being carried by the beat and it went and my mind and I felt like my spirit went with it. It was the most uh, practically indescribable experience uh, I've ever had. And I felt like I wanted to, I wanted to, to dance. I wanted, I felt it very, uh, like very primal yeah. and I knew I had to, I had to speak with them afterwards. So I, I did at, at the end of the evening, as people are putting the chairs away, I, I went up to him and said, Randy, I, I have to tell you what happened when I, and I described this to him. And he just looked at me and he said, oh, Sheila, you heard the call of the drum. And I was like, what? there's a name for this? You just casually say this? I just had the most profound experience. And you say, oh yeah, you just heard the call of the drum. So, and so from there began my journey of uh, seeking out the drum and um, getting the teachings and uh, getting to a place where where others called me drum carrier. Oh, wow. Oh, my goodness. So um, 
how, how do you even start that process? Like, where do your teachings begin? Well, there was an established uh, women's group that I was part of or became part of. Uh, and uh, I came and sat in circle and, and shared my experience and uh, they would have drumming circles regularly. And I didn't own a drum at that time, but they had some what they call community drums. So people that came had their own drums, but there were some community drums that anyone could uh, pick up. And I, and I did uh, join them and I started learning some of the songs and some of the teachings. And then I felt it's time for me to get my own drum. Okay. So when you when you're saying it it was time for you to get your own drum, was it something? Did you make your drum, Sheila? Or I have made drums since. Uh, that one was uh, was purchased from a drum maker. Um, okay. A group of us uh, were felt ready, and we and we we ordered all together. So we sort of have sister drums, I guess. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, they look very similar when we uh, when we come together, uh, and. Uh, I've since made drums, but um, even though this one wasn't made by me, it was still, it's still the most special to me. Oh, and what, what is your drum made of? Um, well, my drum is made oh. of deer hide. Now see if I can get in here. Yeah, here we go. Yeah, yeah. And because it's hide, um, so I'll tell you, when we, when we, we, we don't, display our drums. Let's see if I can do this. Excuse me here. This is small. Um, I keep my drum wrapped in red cloth when it's when it's uh, away, put away. Okay. Or if I carry it anywhere. And this ragged piece of red cloth was much larger, but anything that's sacred to us, we wrap in red cloth. So I have often gifted people things kind of uh, spontaneously and ripped a, a piece of red cloth from my drum cloth. Um, <laughs> so because it's hide, uh, this morning when I unwrapped it, I sat it in the sun for a while so that the hide would warm up. And also the care of the drum involves um, using a light greasing of, you can use anything, you can use like little olive oil in your fingertips, but I was gifted uh, a bear grease from an elder. So I use a little bear grease on mine from time to time and it keeps the hide um, from getting too dry. Oh, that's just like in your book, Sheila, my Indian, the, the bear yes. grease. <laughs> the same stuff you use on your feet. <laughs> yeah. Oh my goodness. Um, can you discuss any of the teachings that you've been learning, Sheila? Um, well, so some of the teachings, yes. Uh, I, you know, I talked with an elder before we had our, our, our chat today about sharing some of it. And, you know, uh, the elder said, yes, you know, I should talk about these things if I feel, if I feel to. Um, when you hear, when you learn a song, uh, it's not just, okay, here, one, two, three, go. You learn the story behind the song. For example, um, there was a, there's a lovely elder who used to come and visit and share teachings. And she gave us a song, which she said it used to have a different name but she was gifting it to us and calling it the friendship song. And she believed that it was going to unite the Mi'kmaq on the island of Newfoundland. Oh, that, that's beautiful. And how, like, how many songs would you say there are, Sheila? Hundreds. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So you could spend a lifetime learning them all. Yes, yes. So it's not just uh, teaching the, okay, we're gonna use this drum beat and one, two, three, go. It's, you have to give the story behind, the teaching behind the song, why it, why it came to be, how it came to be. Um, you know, one of the songs that I carry, um, the elder who shared it, who uh, said that at one point in the women's prisons in uh, Western Canada, the indigenous women were being, um, harmed while while in prison mm -hmm. and so there was an elder that used to go and visit that that prison regularly and work with these women and so she she gave them a song and said while you were being harmed sing this song and it will protect your spirit oh yeah that's that's powerful mm -hmm. very powerful so <laughs> <laughs> So, oh. <laughs> so, <laughs> so <I'm> like, oh. <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah, I know. I know. I, I didn't know I was going to talk about that, but uh, oh my goodness, you no, know, have you know you have the friendship song, you have uh, the strong woman song. There, there are songs for prayer. There are songs for mm-hmm. for lullabies. There, you know, and oh. so they have a story. Yeah, a, a very um, music is a big part of the Mi'kmaq culture. It is. It mm. is. Yeah. You must feel, you must carry songs in your heart then, Sheila. <laughs> I do. And sometimes when I'm, when I'm mulling, when I'm going through something or I'm mulling something, I'll find myself quietly singing a, a song and, I, and I'll think, oh, I don't even remember. What is the name? Oh, yes, of course. That's why it all, it all connects. It's, in, it's internalized now, I guess. Yeah. And it is, do you find like, do the songs come to you? Or did the teachings, like, how did, how does that work? When in those spontaneous moments, I hear the song first. Yeah. And it's like it opens the door for remembering the teaching, which is yeah. what I need at the time, I guess. Yeah. Oh, that's, that's incredible. And would you, what would you say drumming means to you per- personally? Oh, so many words. It means connection mm-hmm. and joy and healing yeah you know when i um in drum circle i've drummed in uh, with with you know 45 women at a time oh my goodness yeah (laughs) (laughs) it's so powerful and uh and you know one person will take a lead on a song and then we'll just and it's just a nod and then you take the next lead and the next person takes the next lead and it's it's very powerful it's sharing it's learning leadership it's learning uh, to be in harmony it's healing you know if we're grieving we drum if we're happy we drum it's the it's our heartbeat yeah 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 the I, I just the energy just must be in, in, incredible yeah yeah what I, I just think that's beautiful it's your heartbeat yeah yeah and thank you for sharing your heartbeat today Sheila really sure. appreciate it well Alan <laughs> well Alan and for our viewers here today, you have to come back tomorrow because Sheila is back with Chief Misal Joe and they talk about their book, My Indian. And it's a very important book because so often, not so often, our history, our books are from a colonial perspective where this book is from the Mi'kmaq perspective and it's reclaiming Sylvester Joe's identity. And to find out more, you have to come back tomorrow and listen to them speak about this incredible book. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Balalan, Sheila. You're so welcome. <laughs>